All right, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about the Bouncy GPS device. That's an OBD2 uh, GPS tracking device that you can buy for your automobile. We bought this device uh, mainly because we have a new team driver and we wanted to keep tabs on not so much where she's at, but um, how she's driving the car. So one of the things that brought me uh, to this device was that it has alerts for various things that you can customize, but uh, it has crash notifications, uh, hard braking notifications, uh, acceleration notifications. Um, there's a lot of things you can customize. Also, uh, it can keep track of the vehicle health. So if a check engine light comes on, it will notify you. Uh, if your vehicle supports it, uh, it will show you the fuel level. Not all vehicles support that function. Unfortunately, in our vehicle, it does not. Like a lot of the videos I was looking for review information on were probably people who were either given the device for free uh, by the company or the company, they were videos from the company itself. I don't know that for a fact, but you can kind of get that sense when you're watching a video. Uh, in this case, in my case, uh, I paid for the full price uh, I have no affiliations with the company. I was just honestly looking for a device that would work uh, in our situation with a new teen driver, as I'm sure many of you are. So I'm going to take you through uh, step by step. Um, I took some pictures when I installed it. Uh, it's going to be different for every vehicle, but in my case, we've installed it in a 2005 Honda CRV. That is going to be the vehicle that our uh, teen drives most of the time. The first step before I installed it though was to activate the service and it was fairly easy to do. Uh, I just downloaded the Bouncy app and you can download that in iOS or Android and you go through the step-by-step -step instructions. Uh, basically uh, you set up an account, uh, you pay for your first month's service which is eight dollars a month and then you activate the device and it will ask you some uh, numbers that are on the package and on the device itself. And then um, once you get it activated, we'll actually do the installation in the car. So in my case, uh, it was pretty easy. Uh, I chose to uh, be a little more um, specific, a little more detailed in my installation. Uh, it is as easy as just plugging it into the OBD2 port on your car. Uh, any car in the United States manufactured since 1996 has had an OBD2 port. So as long as your car is 96 or newer, you will have that port. Um, you can use this device without an OBD2 port if you buy a uh, just a power adapter to OBD2 adapter, but it will not support all of the functions that the device is capable of. So definitely want to use it in a 96 and later vehicle to get the full functionality. In my case, uh, I used a OBD2 splitter and I'll, I'll put links to all the stuff I used in the description below if you want to use the same type of setup. And this is a common way to, uh, I guess you'd say hide the device, even though that's not really what I was trying to do. Um, I'm trying to keep it out of the way and safe from uh, harm or an accidental foot to kick it. Also, it allows you to keep uh, the full use of diagnostic tools, like if your car goes into the dealer or you need to scan for a check engine light or something like that. So. What I did was I uh, basically the uh, factory OBD2 port is just clipped into the metal bracket. It's this way in most cars. I just unclipped it from the bracket, plugged it into the splitter, put one into the splitter right back where the factory OBD2 port was, and then plugged the bouncy into the other port and then zip tied it up uh, in the dash out of the way. Um, I did put it behind a little access door for the fuse panel. That way, if I needed to uh, unplug and plug back in the device, do like a power cycle, it would be easy to do. Installation in other vehicles is a similar process. Once it was installed uh, to activate the device, you basically, I just backed out of my garage, started moving in the driveway, and then within a few seconds, it showed up on the app itself that I had opened. Um, the rest of it is configuring the alerts that you want. There's a ton of stuff that you can configure. Uh, you can set up geo zones. You can set up alerts for all different types of situations. You can set speed bands. And I'm going to go ahead and cover each one of these features a little bit and what I like about them. All right, so when you first get into the app here, 
you'll see uh, the screen and it shows uh, all the different drives. It'll sh show you the status of the vehicle. In my case, it says parked. Uh, you can click on any one of these uh, drives to see more details. Uh, I guess it trips, stats. The stats gives you the total distance, travel time, idle time for the vehicle, the average moving speed, overall speed, just a bunch of information that you might want to take a look at. Um, if we click the next tab, it is our alerts uh, section. And this is going to be dependent on how you set it up, which you'll see in a minute. But this is every time the phone has notified you or the app has notified you of something that you wanted to be notified about. And then you can archive all the alerts, in which case they would go into the archive section, kind of like the trash bin. The next section is the care area. And what this is, is maintenance reminders. So this is not quite as intuitive as you may think. Uh, if you looked into it, basically you have to manually set up alerts. So when you first set up the device, it will ask you for the mileage, like the current mileage on the vehicle. Um, you can then, based off of that mileage, you can set up. So let's say you want to change your oil in 5,000 miles or five months, as I do. You could set up a oil change reminder, and you have to manually input the mileage that you want it to notify you. And then you can set. Um, do you want it to notify you? Uh, you know, when it's a, within a certain threshold of that mileage that it's coming due. The next tab is the actual device itself. It will show you last health check, which is the last time it communicated with the device. The reported address, where it's currently at, the coordinates, the signal strength, uh, which is uh, the bouncy uh, GPS device uses the AT&T network. I believe it uses just the 3G network. So be curious to see what's going to happen shortly when 3G on AT&T is eventually sunsetted depending on where you live and then it shows the IMEI uh, number if you click on the car icon in the top right corner if you have multiple devices they will all be listed there in our case when they have one device either from the alert screen or from your drive screen up in the map area There'll be a little slider looking icon. If you click on that, that takes you to your settings. And this is, the settings is an important area. All right, so if we go into our settings, the first thing we'll see is speed. Uh, so if we click speed, you can set a speed limit, which uh, basically it will visualize speeds travel compared to posted speed limits. And it will only give you this data after the drive is completed, not real time. So at the end of a trip, uh, if you set a threshold, so in my case, I set it for 10 miles an hour over the speed limit. Um, if the driver goes greater than 10 miles an hour over the speed limit at any one point, and it uses speed limit data, probably from Google, so not every road will have it, but it will send you an alert that shows you uh, where they went over the speed limit. Speed bands I have set up and I did not use the default settings. I wanted to see each increment from zero to 25, 25 to 35 miles an hour, 35 to 45, 45 to 55, and 55 to 65. I wanted to be very specific about the speeds that I was able to visually see on the map to analyze how our team driver was um, changing speed while going into different uh, speed zones. And then you can set an excessive speed alert. So in my case, I set it for 75 miles an hour. If at any point the car goes over 75 miles an hour, it will send me an immediate alert. Next thing is a geo zone setting. Uh, basically, you can draw on a map a circle of a certain area. And if the vehicle goes in or out of the area, you can have it alert you. And you can set whether you want it to alert you just going in just going out or both. This would be good, so if you you don't want your driver to leave a certain area, if they do leave the area, it will alert you immediately. The next thing in settings is impact detection. All right, so in impact detection, uh, you can have it send you an alert and it will also text uh, any phone numbers that you program in there. So in my case, I have two recipients programmed in. 
but it will actually send an SMS message alerting you that a impact was detected. And obviously this will only work uh, if there is still power to the uh, device when it senses the impact. So if power is cut, if it's a severe crash, you can't necessarily rely on this. Just something to keep in mind. Okay, next is rapid acceleration and hard braking. Basically, I'll just cover these really quickly. You can set up uh, whether you want it to notify you of excessive, moderate, or light rapid acceleration and excessive, moderate, or light hard braking. I did some testing with this and uh, did some really extreme uh, like 60 mile an hour to zero stops and could not get the app to alert me so I do not really I would not put much faith in this um, this function just to keep it real uh, curfews kind of self-explanatory I have not set this up but if uh, you set a time that the vehicle can't be driving past or before it will alert you uh, simply if the vehicle is moving during that time Trip start and end, uh, that is something I do have set up. Basically, it will alert me when a trip starts or when a trip ends. You can select either or, and uh, basically it just tells you when the car starts moving and whenever the car stops and turns off, it'll let you know that it's stopped and turned off. The fuel level, like I said, it only works on some cars. A lot of uh, the most modern cars with the latest OBD2 systems can support the fuel level. It just depends on the manufacturer and how new of a car it is. Like I said, in my case, it does not work, but you can set it for any percentage to notify you uh, that the fuel is low. Uh, distance driven, so I don't have this set up either, but you can receive an alert when you drive over the distance that is set. Pretty simple, self-explanatory. Uh, idle time, again, this would probably be a good feature for like a fleet use. Uh, you can set an idle event where it will uh, alert you anytime the car has idled for more than a certain period of time or you can set idle total where it will alert you whenever the total idle time of a trip is over the threshold that you set. The last thing is the trip fuel economy. Uh, you can receive an alert when your vehicle's fuel economy goes outside of the range that you set. For instance, if it is lower than 15 or greater than 25 miles per gallon, you know, between that range. Again, this uses uh, speed uh, mileage data and uh, fuel level data to try to calculate this. I'm not sure how reliable it could be. I'd, I'd be skeptical that it's really reliable, but again, and if you're looking at just uh, data in a large fleet, this would probably be kind of cool to have, uh, but in my case, we don't really use it. All right, so now that we've talked about all the different settings and how to set it up, Let's just kind of talk about uh, how it actually works. So while, you know, the vehicle is in motion and being operated, uh, you can watch it real time. One thing that I really liked about Bouncy, well, there's two main things that really made this stand out over the competitors. The first thing was that it's only $8 a month. And some of the competitors wanted to charge at least double that for uh, basically less functionality. So probably around $20 a month is kind of a normal price for some of the other competitors versus $8 a month for Bouncy. So that really sold me was that it's not going to cost me too much per month in just uh, operation fees. The next thing is that it actually this device updates every 15 seconds. Some of the com competitors are only every 30 seconds because they want to use less data on whatever network they're running on. So this updates its positioning every 15 seconds and it does a very good job. So even though it's only updating every 15 seconds, when you're watching it on the map, it will appear to just be moving and it will usually not cut corners uh, on the map. It will show the car turning corners and following the streets as long as it's on a street. So it actually works pretty well. I was presently surprised with how well it shows on the map in real time and the post-trip data shows. Um, Again, after a trip has been completed, you can go back and look at all the data from the trip. You can analyze the speed at any point on the trip. You can see if uh, how far uh, the car was going over the speed limit. There's just all kinds of statistical data 
that is pretty neat to analyze, especially if you're in a situation where you have a new teen driver and you want to make sure that they are following the laws and doing what they're supposed to do, make sure they're going the right way. Uh, it's just, it's good to have this kind of data at your fingertips. All right. So again, I have no interest uh, with this company. I just wanted to give my real world experience. We've been using the device for about two weeks now. And so far, uh, we really like the functionality of it. Uh, it's pretty nice. You know, you may tell your new driver, you know, to text you when they get to where they're going with this device. You really don't uh, need to have them bother doing that. Um, it just gives you that little security blanket. Uh, if you want to be able to find out where the vehicle is at any point, you know, once you're comfortable, once your uh, team gets a little bit older, if you want to cancel the service, you can cancel the service. You could also move this to another vehicle. Um, I can see how this would be really neat for fleet users. The only thing about fleet users is obviously it's $8 per vehicle. Uh, I do believe they do offer a discount um, once you get over a certain amount of vehicles. So, you know, if you have a smaller fleet, this might be a really good option to keep track of all your vehicles. Uh, if the device, something the one some people are concerned about, what if the device is discovered and it is unplugged? Well, if the device is pulled out, it instantly has no power, so it will have no way to tell you that. But obviously, if the device is in the middle of a trip or the car is on and it is unplugged, it will stop sending data. You will see that there is something wrong. Um, if the device is plugged back in, it will then give you an alert that it, the power was lost and it was restored. Uh, obviously, that's not going to do you much good after the fact if it was stolen or someone just ripped it out and threw it out of the side of the road or something. You'll just see the data stop at that point and you'll know there was a problem. So just something to keep in mind. Also, if the vehicle is stolen uh, while the car is turned off, it probably would not be a very good way to track it. That's not really what this device is used for. This device is not meant to be a theft recovery tool, um, but it does check in every so often. So while you can't force it to give you a real-time update, when it does update, it will update with its location. Obviously, when the vehicle is turned off, it is trying to conserve battery power. If it had a constant GPS lock on your vehicle, it would drain your battery very fast. So if you're using this just to have GPS data of where the vehicle is, even when it's off at all times, this may not be the best device, but they don't really market it for that use either. So I do not fault them for that. It's actually working perfectly. A little buggy here and there with some of the functions um, that, like I talked about, like, you know, the fuel level not working and, you know, the mileage and stuff like that. But overall, I give it a big thumbs up, especially for the price point. And we're very satisfied with it. So hopefully the video was informative. Maybe some of you who are looking to use a device like this in the same manner that I am. I just wanted to give an overview and a quick review of what we think about it so far and how it's been working. Uh, if you have any questions uh, that I can maybe answer, you can leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer your questions. If the video is helpful, be sure to like it, subscribe to the channel for more, and until next time, we'll see you later.